Welcome to the Geeky Chocolate Extravaganza. Today we are welcoming our dear friend Richard Port who brings us back to our roots. We love when Richard joins us in the kitchen. First off, one of his most popular classes is our Queen of Mons, but he's taking us back to breads and pies and all the things that we love, definitely true comfort foods. Um, we'd like to say that he kind of takes us back to those things that maybe we didn't appreciate or didn't understand or even grabbed the recipe before those um, who were teaching and making it for us maybe forgot. I know my grandma has forgotten some things and done things uh -huh. differently than when we've grown up. And so it's so fun to have you in the kitchen bringing us back to the roots and the memories. I feel like there's so many memories that are there involved is. with food. Um, and today, what are we going to be making? Today we're making <clears throat> nougat de Montemar. Okay. It's a French nougat. Okay. Um, I did some research on this. I learned how to make this in California, and this is an authentic French recipe. And one thing I thought was interesting about this is that this usually isn't made in the chocolate shops. Oh, okay. Usually it's, made, it's made at home. Okay. And I was surprised though because <laughs> the area of France that makes this they make about 4,500 pounds a year. Oh, wow. It's very popular. Yeah. Now. And you can tell that it's French because it is white, has eggs in it, and is soft. Okay, it so stays soft. Uh -huh. Okay. There's another kind of nougat, which is dark and more caramelized. Okay. Apparently, nougat's been around for a long time. Okay. And so, but this is just a good French recipe, popular at Christmas time. Yeah. And it's good by itself, but it's really good dipped in chocolate. Kind of reminds you of a big hunk bar. Okay, okay. softer. Why, why do you think it's one of those things that has maybe kind of been forgotten or not a, like used as um, much? Some people, they just, they don't understand the process with it. They okay. don't want, they think, oh, this is really complicated. I can't do this. Or I don't have all the ingredients. Or I really want to make this, but I don't know. Yeah. Or I lost the recipe and yeah. I can't remember what to do. So it's just something that people... Um, French people especially like it, okay. and a lot of Americans like it too, but it's just something I thought we'd, you'd like to make here, because yeah. it incorporates cocoa butter and chocolate. Well, I think you have this natural ability to uh, take those things that are a little bit scarier, some ingredients that maybe we're not as familiar with or not sure how to use them, and you have made them in such a simplified version. Well, thank you. And so I thought this would be a great way for those of us who may be a little intimidated to do some candy uh -huh. making, but want to start those memories is um, this would be yeah, a great it, place it's to start. A very, it's a very simple recipe. Okay. It's it's um it's just basic. The only thing fancy in it is maybe pistachios, and you can buy those at Costco. Yes. <laughs> Costco made things less exactly. less intimidating. <laughs> Absolutely. And so to begin with, we have our almonds. Okay. Now, a lot of times you're gonna buy almonds and they have the skin on them. Okay. And so you don't want the skin, it's bitter. And these are whole almonds, yes. right? Okay. So all you do is just take that and now squeeze it. Just, and look how easy that is. Oh wow, is. it's like you snapped and then yep. the skin came right off. I've actually never done that Oh really? <laughs> yeah, it's just, you just pour boiling water over your almonds and then the skin comes right off. Okay. And then you're gonna wanna put those in the oven and toast them. Okay. And in the grocery store, I've seen them without the skin, but maybe in slivers. Uh -huh. Is that a... That would be okay. But, but would you, do you prefer using we prefer, I prefer the whole ones. Okay. First thing, when you cut it, you can see the cuts different on okay. a whole almond. I think they're better. Okay. And then, so basically our ingredients are honey okay. and sugar, water, and glucose. We all know that glucose is powdered sugar, is corn, corn syrup. syrup. And then we have, we're going to make a meringue. Okay. And it has egg whites, sugar, and salt. And then we have our nut mixture, and it's in the oven right now. And it is pistachios and almonds, and they're getting warm, and you get in the bowl warm, and you'll see why. Okay. And then we have powdered sugar and cocoa butter. That's it. So really very simple uh -huh. ingredients, and we're going to be using most of these ingredients throughout the week. So hopefully you'll have cocoa butter and oh, yeah. you know just and pistachios from Costco. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the first thing you do is get your almonds and peel them. Okay. Very okay, simple. Easy peasy, that part's done. Okay. So now we're gonna get started. We have two pans. In one pan we have three quarter cup of honey. Okay. And in this pan right here, we have water, sugar, and um, corn syrup. Now, honey boils really fast. Okay. Corn syrup, water, and honey, don't, and water, corn, water, corn syrup, and sugar do not boil as fast. Okay. So that's why they're in two separate pans. And also, we have to be really careful. This pan with the honey in it, it can go all day like this. But 
Once we put the water, sugar, and corn glucose in here, we don't move it. We don't stir it, we don't move it. It'll create crystals and that will ruin your candy. Okay. So we're okay. gonna put, we've got three quarter cup honey in there. Okay. And here we've got one and a half cups of sugar and we've got our glucose. And now we need one and a half cup plus two tablespoons of water. Okay. And the water goes in first. And then we've got two tablespoons of, of um, corn syrup and the sugar, which is all right here. And so now, because we don't stir this, this goes right in the center of the pan. And, and again, you're not stirring because you're trying to avoid having crystals. crystals. Okay. Crystals are the enemy of candy. Okay. So now that's going to be weird for some people. They're going to think, oh, look, I got to stir that. Because I look at that and go, this needs to be mixed before yes. I'll even turn on the heat. These are digital thermometers. Okay. And the reason I like these is they clip onto the pan. And that one, you have to make sure that they're not on the bottom. Because all of the temperature is coming from the tip of that thermometer, right. correct? Uh -huh. And then this one here will go in the honey. Okay. Now, like I said, honey boils really quick. So we're just going to set this on here. And now we have to be good at timing. Okay. Because our egg whites, we have to have to a medium peak. And in here we have egg white, sugar, and salt. Okay. And in here we have the honey. So we're going to go ahead and start our egg whites. So you see how the peak goes over and holds itself? And our honey was cooking a little bit quicker than our egg whites were yes. whipping. So tell me what you did there. So I turned the honey down. Okay, so just so just it would it slow uh -huh. the, the heating process until this became yes. to medium. So I'm going to turn it on to medium right here now. I'm going to turn this to medium. It's about all of it. but the whole purpose of you adding the honey separate from the other ones was just because it does have a high different milk in there, yes, right? Yes, it gets hot a lot quicker. And you want to get the honey incorporated and then we'll add the syrup. I can smell that. It smells good, doesn't it? Can scrape this. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. But the paddles are a little stronger than the whips. Okay. So we want to. If, if you were to leave these on, it could break these. Okay. Good advice. Okay. Okay. Now we need to let this cool down just a little. It is pretty hot. Get some more air into it so that it cools it down. Okay, so we're going to stop it for a second and we're going to temp it. What temperature are you looking at? 140. What? Okay. Around there. Okay. 
So you're 153? Yeah, you want it to be about down to 140. So that it, and then we'll add the powdered sugar and the cocoa butter. And with the, adding the cocoa butter, here we've melted cocoa butter, just like the solid form that you've seen us share about. Do you worry about what temperature this is going into here? No. Okay, you just want it a liquid form. Yeah, and we're, we're good here. So now we're gonna add half my powdered sugar and half of that. What do you mean it wants to separate? See how there's butter separated a little bit? Uh -huh. It's okay, we'll just keep mixing it and we'll come together. The agitation uh -huh. gets it everything back yep. together? Okay. I think at home, if I were to see this, I'd go, oh no. Oh no, I know it. I've, I've ruined it. But you haven't. Okay. And now we need to get our nuts. Okay, see our nuts are warm. Oh yeah. Warm. We're going to take our nougat. See how nice that looks? And we're going to scrape it. Again, Richard loves to get every spot. Well, you don't so. want it. <laughs> Adding it to our nuts. <laughs> don't leave them on the beaters. Exactly. And tell me about this, the parchment paper that we're going to do. Okay, we just got parchment paper that we're, I already got it right there. It's buttered. Okay. I just buttered it and it will, we'll just press it on there. So just in between the two. Uh -huh. Okay. I can get rid of this? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> well, that's stuck to the... It does. It does a good job. But having the nuts warm and the bowl warm, it gives us a little time because the nougat has cooled down and it's harder to incorporate the nougat into the nuts. So we're gonna put this here. That's not as scraping. You don't want that? Yeah, but you know, I get this stirred. <laughs> so, I, I can <laughs> scrape. <laughs> so I gotta stir it. There's some like like different, I can see a little cocoa butter. Are you okay that this is not uh -huh, totally okay. mixed? Okay. That'll be fine. Then I've just taken paper and lightly buttered it, and that's what we're gonna press it on. So you can see how this goes together. I mean, don't leave this part, right? No. And look at all those nuts. So with traditional nougat, is there other things that you can add? So say if I have a nut allergy, would there other, be other things Good that you question. would put? No. <laughs> leave it. You'd have to leave the nuts out and just have it like that. Cranberries or, I mean, what are some other things that you've tried in there? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, just do it without the nuts. Yeah. Okay. I just, you know, keep it to the original. Um, cranberries might be kind of good. But I prefer the original authentic recipe. Okay. Okay. So once you got it like that, okay. open that up. We just dump it on. I'm glad this is a two-person job. Thanks me for too. giving me something to do. Okay, now I put this in the middle. That's good now. Okay. We put our other buttered piece. Butter side down. Yeah, but we need to move this. <laughs> yeah. And using this other piece of paper, you just press it down. Basically, just as a barrier so your hands aren't a mess, right? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. And your hands won't stick to it. Okay. You don't want to add a whole bunch of butter because if you're going to dip these in chocolate, the butter oh, creates a barrier for the chocolate. Separates, yep. So then you also can take a rolling pin. About how thick are you wanting? About an inch. Okay. So you can take a rolling pin and roll it out to what you think is about right. You could put it in a pan if you wanted, but this is how I was taught. 
So my head, that's how we have to do it. <laughs> so you putting in the pan, basically letting the barrier, the sides yeah. of the pan uh -huh. act as like your guides, right? So you kind of want it to be square if you can, because you don't want to, if you're going to dip it, you don't want to waste it. Yes. So you think that's not thick enough? I'm going to follow your eye because okay. you've done this before, but. And then a plastic scraper. Thank you. Bench my hand. So now we're just going to take it. Smooth the sides. Just kind of square it up. Okay. And then do you have to let this sit and rest for a while? Yeah. Okay. It just needs to, it just needs to cool, cool down. Okay. But it still stays, stays soft, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Now you can, and on the recipe this is written down, but if you want it to be softer, go less than 300. Okay. A little bit, like okay. five degrees less and it'll stay soft, it'll be softer. But it'll, it's pretty soft now. Which is this, I feel like that's the best part of candy making, right? If you enjoy uh -huh. your nougat or your caramels or something like that to be a little chewier or a little, you know, yeah. stiffer, then it's all your temperatures, right? Right, exactly. Okay, there you go. This is it. That's it. So from here, you cut it into just kind of three-form squares, kind of like what we have here, right? Yeah, just cut them in squares. And then, from this stage, you then can you dip, them, dip in them in chocolate. And here we have both options. Which do you prefer? I prefer the chocolate. Do you? Okay. And a dark or semi-sweet. Okay. Seems to go better than milk. Okay. Because there is so much sweetness in yes. here. Okay. These aren't, they're not super sweet. Okay. But there are, there, there's a honey flavor. Yeah. Okay. And so there's no vanilla. Okay. There's no the other flavors. The honey, you want the honey to shine and the cocoa butter okay. to accent it. Accent it. And then so, how long does this last for? In this stage right set right here, um, it'll last a few, oh sorry, nope. it'll last a few days and then you want to dip it and then it will last, you know. But if I'm making this around Christmas time, what, like how long ahead of time, say, can oh, I now. make it? Okay, make and it then now. it's still fine to give uh -huh. at Christmas time. Well, I make it now, okay. dip it, put it in the freezer. Okay. And then when you take candy, when you freeze candy, take it out of the freezer leave it in the container it was frozen in okay. until it's thawed. Don't open it, don't do anything else. Just let it come out and let it thaw, then open it. Okay. Otherwise you get crusts on it. Oh, awesome. So this is definitely something we can make ahead of time. Alleviate uh -huh. the holiday stress, but also yes, you, you, make it now where we can create the memories without being the exactly. angry mom. <laughs> yeah. And you, you can easily make this, you know, you can make it now and you can see how quick it cuts. But it is better if it's a little bit more chilled. Oh yes, it's beautiful. And you can see all the, um, you can see the pistachios yes. and the almonds. So it can be a little expensive because of the pistachios, but it can be, it's well worth it. So say if I am on a budget or something, could I just do less nuts inside yes. of it? Okay, okay. You could do peanuts. Okay. If, you're, if the budget is an issue, you could do peanuts. Okay. And not pistachios. But the recipe does not, like the texture is not based on the amount of nuts no. that's inside of it. No. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, I guess because you said before we could leave the nuts. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. You could. Um, Want to taste it? Oh, always. We'll go ahead and have a taste. Okay. I'll take the small one right here. Have a taste and see what you think. Oh, it's delicious. It is, isn't it? It's really good texture. Mm -hmm. and the crunchiness with the chewiness. It's is, good. It's perfect. Yeah. But yeah, you could change the nuts if you, you know, because that can be an issue mm -hmm. for some people. The pistachios and the almonds can be expensive. But so just go with peanuts. No. Just plain peanuts. And like I said, you can mix up the honey. You could have um, lavender honey. You okay. can have orange honey. Okay. That'd be good. But I kept it to the French recipe. Just keep it traditional just, for you. Just for that. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you for giving us at least the confidence to be able to create some of these fun memories you in the kitchen. Anything else we want to add? Yeah, to just remember, um, have everything ready before you start. Okay. Have your mise en place. Yes. Everything ready. Have your nuts ready. They go in the oven in a warm bowl. Okay. Have your um, everything measured out. Have everything ready to go so you can just start. Perfect. And then you don't have to worry about where things are. And low and slow is the, the best yeah. name for all of this, right? Right. You saw how quickly it went together. Oh. You really can't mess it up unless you burn the sugar. Sure. Then you're going to mess it up. But um, we got this. Just enjoy it. Yes. Enjoy the process of making it. Enjoy the um, 
time in the kitchen. Exactly. Yes. Um, you would want to make this with children probably at this until you got to this point. Okay. Because the hot syrup. Yeah. Allow them could, to do the pressing. Right. They could do and then, that. And then the dipping. Definitely. Awesome. They could help with that. And then, um, and it's the, it's just a fun candy. It's really It's fun. not something you make all, you know, year round, no. but it is something that you would enjoy. Which is what we love this time of year because you yeah. can create those memories that they'll remember. We got to do the nougat every year, mom. Exactly. <laughs> it's a, it becomes a, a familiar smell. Yes. And smells evoke memories. Yes. And so that smell of that honey makes a big difference. Well, thank it just you. it just it just helps. Thank you, Richard. You're this welcome. was fun. We love having you in the kitchen. Well thanks. Go home, make a new day, and let us know how it turns out for you. And the recipe will be on our blog. Yep, it'll be there. Okay. If you can read my writing. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> Look how beautiful this is. Of course we can read it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Richard. You're welcome.